Now, does independence necessarily mean um, does it necessarily mean financial independence? You know, because you can be an independent church but still be supported by another church. It doesn't mean that you should not take support from other people or even you should not be supported by other people. So I don't believe that just because a church is independent that they govern themselves, that it means necessarily that it's wrong for a bishop to be supported by other churches. Because a lot of bishops, you know, before they're ordained into the ministry, they'll go around and they'll get support and people want to support them so that they don't have to work a full-time job. So does independence necessarily mean financial independence? No. Um, you know, because can a preacher be financially dependent but still doctrinally independent? Well, you know, it's possible. So we can't just say, oh, you know, they're getting a paycheck, therefore they're serving that person. Because any paid bishop or deacon is ultimately being supported by his people. Because if you say it's wrong for a bishop to be supported by other churches, and then therefore he has an interest to serve those churches, well, there might be a, there might be a temptation to do that, but it's the same if even I was supported by you guys. You know, I could technically be financially dependent on you guys, but does that mean that I'm doctrinally dependent, that I would necessarily make you guys my master? No. I think there is a temptation to do that, and that's the danger of being supported and knowing where your funds come from, that ultimately you may serve mammon instead of God. But that's why I think the qualifications of a bishop are so important that it's not somebody that's money-minded. It's somebody that's willing to hold fast the faithful word and not be greedy or filthy lucre because it's somebody that needs to take a stand and you say, you know what, even if you guys stop giving to the church and even if churches stop supporting me, which I personally don't at the moment, I'm still willing to preach the truth and I'm still willing to take a stand for the word of God. And you know what, if I have to go back to work, then, then so be it. I'm just going to trust that God will provide for me and my family. And I think that's what the mindset that every bishop and um, deacon that is supported by the people of God need, need to take that stand. So, you know, there, it's possible, um, and it's possible to be financially dependent on people, but doctrinally independent. But, you know, there are some dangers, because obviously finances can, can be used to threaten um, authority or threaten a bishop to, um, to change their stance or to, to make a decision contrary to what they believe is right. Um, you know, there's a, there's a temptation to compromise because obviously if you know, you know your, your, fa your family and your, your life is being supported by the people that you may not want to say people, uh, you may not want to say things that upset people. And you know, maybe uh, as a word of wisdom to other bishops out there, it might be a good idea to not live so luxurious a life so that if you do lose your funds that you can s still sustain yourself and not have uh, and be willing to, to live just a basic life. Um, what are some other dangers? Uh, yeah, the other danger is just that there is a temptation, obviously, to serve uh, mammon instead of God. And the Bible says that you can't do that. You're either serving mammon or you're serving God. But it is possible to serve God, like I said, and still receive a paycheck. Two last things I just want to cover before we uh, break. But um, what, are, what are some advantages and disadvantages? So... There, those are some dangers, those are some disadvantages. But what are the advantages of being supported? Obviously, if you're supported, then you don't have to worry about where the money comes from, right? You don't have to worry about getting a job. So obviously, you've got the money coming in. That, that, that's the obvious advantage. But also resources, because if you're supported by people, you know, people might let you use their building, or people might have you know, other things that they can give you, like a lot of churches that start are given old chairs from other, from other people. So money and resources. But... I think on top of that as well is if you're supported, there's no need to work a second job. So right now I do work a full-time job and, and to be honest, that takes away a lot of my time. It talks, takes away 40 hours a week. Imagine if I had that 40 hours a week to, to minister to you guys, to study the Word of God, to organize things. I mean, that would really free some things up. You know, we're a small church right now and we don't really do anything that big. You know, we have the soul winning and we have the social event every now and then. But even with that and just preaching one t once a week, you know, I, I, I struggle to comprehend how some people can work a full-time job and preach three times a week. And it was funny, I won't name him, but I was talking to one bishop and, uh, you know, I, I, he was saying to me, like, oh, you know, how are you finding it? And I was saying, oh, it's, it's good that we just have the one gathering because, you know, I spend so much time preparing my sermon. I, I couldn't imagine preparing three every week. That would just be insane. I just have absolutely no time at all. 
and, and he was joking with me because he was saying like, yeah, you know what, because he has three, three, three gatherings a week. And he was joking with me and saying, yeah, you know what, and sometimes on Sunday he's just winging it because like he hasn't had the time to prepare. And you know, I don't really want to be in that situation. I mean, I'm struggling enough as it is already to prepare one. But when you guys come together on Sundays, I want to give you something really meaty to chew on so you have something things to think about. So, you know, there's no need to work that second job um, and you can, focus ma you can focus more on the work in the ministry. And this is why, you know, I'm not really for those people that are saying, oh, you know, a bishop cannot take a paycheck. He must work a full-time job because it's obvious to anybody that if I didn't have to work a full-time job, obviously I could concentrate more on this because right now all that's happening is I'm working two jobs. You know, I'm working this job, which is not paying me, and I'm working a job at work, which is paying me. So I'm strapped between two, and anybody knows that when you're working two jobs, you don't do both as effectively as you could as if you worked one job. That's why in your contract, when you sign at work, they, they, there's usually a clause about not moonlighting and not having like, you know, a second business on the side because they're paying you this amount so that they have your full attention so that you're not doing things for your other job um, at work. So it's obvious that you know, there, there are advantages of uh, being supported because you can focus solely on that work. 